So uh, this morning is a morning of shenanigans. Um, <laughs> uh, you may remember uh, Wendy's daughter, Denise. <laughs> And Scott, Scott, you're going to get to see your grandma in a minute. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to St. James, those of you who, uh, this is your first time here. We're glad to have you here and want to make sure that you come downstairs after church uh, for fellowship. I understand there should be a cake down there. We're going to celebrate at least three occasions. And... Uh, we'd love to have you join us. So today's service is Holy Baptism. We're going to baptize two little ones, God willing. <laughs> and as uh, most of you know, it's my last Sunday here. So uh, we'll be celebrating that as well. Um, if you need to use the restroom during the service, uh, if you don't want to go out into the cold, I would invite you to just come right up here, go through these doors, take a left, take a right at the fire extinguisher, and you can use that restroom. Um, I'm trying to think what else I usually say. I think that's about it. So I invite you to take a moment to quiet your hearts and minds and spirits so that we might let God and the Holy Spirit come into our hearts, and that together we may worship God.
are you, holy and living one. You come to the people and set them free. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord God of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, one creator of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. <clears throat> A reading from the second book of Kings. Now what was about to take Elijah up to the heaven by a whirlwind? Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here where the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elijah said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. A company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes. I know, be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took up his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into the heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today are the first six verses of Psalm 50, which we will read together. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to the setting. Out of Zion, perfect in his beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not be silenced. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me my royal followers, the those who have made a covenant with me, and seal it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. A reading 
from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel or the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said that light shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could reach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then G Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a loud voice over, a, then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. there is a term called the liminal space. And the liminal space is a place in a structure where there is sort of a transition from one part of the structure, let's say a house, to another. So for instance, a hallway that leads you from your family room to the bedrooms is a liminal space. Or if it were my brothers, the patio space that, that uh, separates the sliding glass door to the outdoor swimming pool, that patio space would be a liminal space. 
it's a transition from one thing to another. Well, in spiritual terms, we frequently talk about liminal spaces, places where our spirits and our hearts seem to be translated almost or moved from one place to another. Or in spirituality, we frequently speak about being in a liminal place. That is being in this time be between what was and what will be. And it's frequently a time of uncertainty because we don't see down the hallway or we don't see the patio that will take us from a sliding glass door to a swimming pool. Being in that space can be unsettling, disconcerting, a little frightening, a little uh, unknowing. So today we hear lessons that talk about this idea of liminal space and liminal time. As Elijah, who has been the prophet of prophets, oh, about 800 BCE, just a few years ago, <laughs> as Elijah is passing on his prophetic powers through the mantle, as he is doing that, he is going to be taken up in this chariot of fire. And Elisha is nervous about this time between when Elijah will leave and he will take on being the prophet of prophets. And so all this conversation about making sure that he gets the mantle of Elijah and wanting a double share of the prophetic powers. But that time between these two prophets, between the ending of one and the beginning of another, might be considered a liminal time. There are three or four other liminal times. Oh, there's Jesus' transfiguration. Let's talk about that for a second. Some people have said that the transfiguration, this is always the reading for the last Sunday before Ash Wednesday. And people have wondered, is this really a culmination of the season of Epiphany? Is it, you recall Epiphany means a revelation or a scene in a new way. In our opening hymn today, we heard in hymn form all the things that Jesus has done that has revealed him for who he is to the people. But here at the culmination of this part of the gospel and this part of the church year, is this truly the culmination of our epiphany season? Is it the culmination of the revelation of who Jesus is before his death and resurrection? Or is it a prelude to Lent, which begins Wednesday, I know there's another holiday that day, but Ash Wednesday begins on Wednesday. And is this, is this a story that is meant to help feed us through the pilgrimage or the journey to Lent? Down that hallway from having all these experiences of Jesus preaching and teaching and healing and whatnot, to the lessons that talk about Jesus being in the desert and being tempted and the opposition of the authorities against him. Is it a story that's meant to strengthen us? Well, regardless of what it is, I think it's a story about liminal times and spaces. And what makes me think that, among other things, is that Peter didn't know what to say 
about what he saw. He couldn't quite put it into any categories that he had known thus far. He couldn't say, oh, you're just like Moses. Well, Moses seems to be standing with him, and he can't be like Elijah, those two perhaps representing the law and the prophets. They've never seen this this metamorphosis before. That's what that word is in the Greek, that Jesus was metamorphosed in front of them. They've never seen that before. And Peter, poor Peter, doesn't know what to do. So he's thinking he'll just build a little shrine so that the three of them can have a place to be worshipped and whatnot. But that's not, I don't think, what the point of this event is. I wonder if the point is to sort of look towards the resurrection and a sort of foreknowledge of what that will be. And the time that the disciples are in now, the time where Jesus and the disciples are in now, where Jesus more and more is confronted with people a, who want to kill him, and B, his predictions that that will happen, and his willingness to be sacrificed for that. There is this liminal time now between the mountaintop and what happens in Jerusalem. So it seems to me that there are three perhaps four liminal times and places that we could think of today. Well, maybe it's four because there's a Super Bowl. <laughs> I'll be done preaching by then. <laughs> yeah, some of you aren't laughing. <laughs> Here's one liminal time, is that today is my last Sunday with you. I'm going to try not to cry through this. Today is my last Sunday with you. I have been with you for 14 years. And we have become accustomed to one another. I have loved you. And as I look at each of you, I see not just your faces, but I see the stories behind them. I see your life events that have been joyous and have been tragic. I've seen times when you're not at your best and neither am I. And I've seen you rise to occasions that I never would have thought of. But I'm leaving. When I leave today, I'll give my keys, I think to Len, maybe to Deb, I'm not sure. I'll give my keys because I'm not going away on a chariot of fire, but, and I think my car is in pretty good condition, so I don't think the muffler system will go out, but I'm leaving. And that's going to be a liminal moment for me, a liminal time. People ask me, yesterday we had a fabulous party. I loved every minute of it, and I want to thank everybody for coming and everybody who helped prepare it. But everybody says, well, Carol, what are you going to do when you retire? And I said, well, there are a couple trips coming up. They'll be done by the middle of May, two different trips. But really, what am I going to do after I retire? Well, tomorrow I think I'm going to be kind of tired. But Tuesday? Wednesday? I don't know. I've got some ideas. But right now, when I leave, I'm going to be in this hallway. I'm going to be on that terrace looking towards the future of what God calls me to do. A second sort of liminal thing that we're doing today is we are going to baptize 
two children, Wendy and Len's grandchildren, Denise and Mike's children. And baptism presents to us, as do our own baptisms, present to us a time where life might be lived according to the values of the culture, might be lived in light of other sorts of priorities. But in baptism, one says, we are going to live in this way. We're going to raise these children up in this way. We're going to grow more and more in this way. And as you all know, it's not a one and done, and you've got it all figured out, and you're ready to rock and roll. It's a process that takes a long time. And in that space, it can be hard to know what to do, where to go, where God is calling us, where God is calling me to. To live a baptized life is in a sense to decide to live in a liminal space. Because over and over again, people will tell you and the saints, especially the mystic saints, and the scripture will tell you that that is also where God works. God works in the hallway, in that place where maybe emotions and thinking and all those things are frail, in that place where you're journeying but you're not quite sure what's at the end, where your heart might be most open. God works and is with us in those places. So I'm trusting that that is true for me. I am trusting and believe that it is true for Mara and Selen. And I think it is true for this congregation. You are entering into a liminal space. You know who's going to be here, or at least the leadership knows, who's going to be here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, at least through Easter, and then hopefully there'll be an interim here. So you, you know that some things are planned, but other things like who your next settled leader will be is unknown. You can't know who that person is. As the leadership was told a couple of months ago, it is so important for this congregation to find the person who is the right fit for you all, where you fit with them and they fit with you. Well, God only knows who that person might be. But in the meantime, you all are in that liminal space. And even that person out there who you don't know who it is, is also in a liminal space. You understand what I'm saying, right? The key, perhaps, is to not get stuck in that liminal place. To not get stuck from moving forward, moving towards the new, moving towards new life, regeneration, resurrection, rebirth. That is what this congregation is called to now. <clears throat> In this time where there's, I hope, a bit of sadness, there is for me, about leaving, that bitter sweetness, and that joyous welcoming of someone else. <coughs> Don't get stuck. Don't stop doing what you all do so well. Even stretch yourselves. Don't get stuck. 
but remember God is not so interested in the past in order to live it again. God is interested in the past in order to help propel you into the future. But also be tender with yourselves because this is an unsettled place and you need each other. You need each other and maybe more importantly, others need you. Others need you. As a bishop said yesterday, you matter. And so you can't take a time out right now. In fact, it's important to dig in. It's important to put your energies into this congregation and this place so that you can all move together into this future. So I want to commend little, little spaces for us. I want you to look for them in your own lives. I've pointed out the big one in this congregation right now and the one that the children are going to be a part of in just a moment. Look for those liminal places and rejoice in them, even as you're nervous and a little bit trepidatious. The Bible verse I go to at a time like this, and I leave it with you, is this. <clears throat> Glory to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, the power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. That is true. That is true. So please believe that God has plans for you to do more than you can ask or imagine. And when you're called, to step forward in that liminal place, in that liminal space, then move forward. Because God's got you. God's got you back. So I will miss you all, as you know. At the end of the service, I'll probably be sobbing. Not sobbing, I'm not afraid to be sobbing. But give me some tears. But it has been an honor and a blessing to serve you all. And you have graced me as I hope I have graced you. And let's go into that liminal space together, knowing that that's exactly where we're supposed to be. And that puts you on that. Now I'm going to call up uh, Denise and Mike and Amanda and Samantha and Mara and Stellan and Andrew and Isaac to come on back to the font. And uh, for those of you who are in your seats, we're going to continue with the sacrament of baptism. And I believe it begins on page six. Okay.
and live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory. He lives and reigns now and forever.
Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon each of the servants the payments of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you in the household of God, and as the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Okay. 
Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. I've never had a baptism that I couldn't make happen. <laughs> and my record's not broken. <laughs> so, uh, welcome again. And um, as I said, you're all welcome to come down for refreshments after the service, and I hope you will. Um, I'd also like to thank everybody who had a part in yesterday's party for me. I know a lot of you were behind the scenes making things happen, and I, I know that I wasn't able to thank each of you personally, but truly know my thanks to each of you. Um, there are, I think, our announcements in the bulletin somewhere, and I think you can read them on your own unless there's something particularly noteworthy. Um, so, as I said, Wednesday, 7 o'clock, Ash Wednesday, you go and have your Valentine green cuisine or dinner or whatever, and then you come and have your ashes imposed upon you. Um, everything else I'm going to ask you to read on your own. And Wendy will have information about the alms project for Lent. Kathy has information about the Lenten program. And Len has information about the elevator, if you need information about that. So, oh, and here's why we'll be baptized for last Sunday. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to see. <laughs> Uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank you. 
Bless his gifts for
made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophet, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your son. For in these last days you sent him to you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. James and all your saints, you may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray together. Bye. 
body of Christ who breathed us. Christ, 
accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Soloist, but it's our office manager. 
Janet. And Janet. And Janet, who's not here. Right? But you can, um, this is, these have been great, great people to work with. And I'm, again, blessed to do that. So if you stand. Lord, it is a time of change. A season has ended. A new season begins. Let us be still in the presence of God. We have journeyed together on the way as pilgrims and companions. We have met new horizons. We have stumbled and found our pathways. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let us be grateful. Let us forgive one another. Let it be. The time of change is here. The time of letting go and taking up. The time of releasing and trust. Let us look expectantly to a new day, to a new truth and a new life. Let us hold tight to memories, to lessons learned, to love. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, may God and Christ be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and forever. Amen. <laughs>
short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind. Go in peace to love and serve God and the world. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Hey, Jan. Janet, are you there? Well, she said hi from the chat, but then I asked you to unmute. Um, I'm here from Mexico. Yeah, but that was, and then that's still her iPhone. And so I asked her to unmute. And, oh, her phone. Okay. Okay. 
Well, then you can well, say goodbye anyway. Yeah, Janet, love for the kisses. And, you know, we'll have to have a meeting to talk about things in holy faith, which has nothing to do with St. James. So love to you and John and whoever else you're with down there. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, it's funny because I Well, and they had learned it for times when uh, I'm going to head back. Yeah, when uh, Carol was away. Yeah, but I think at the end of the day, I kind of was. Yeah, you know, I I did the service for Christians. Well, if you don't, well, I mean, if Carol did that, I don't want to do it. And all the two might not have been the same as, you know, like we, we, uh, you know, put the bulletin up and you know, can see it. You know what I mean? Like, but it's not that we're, I'm not, I'm not a not technology person, but we were, um, we were doing the best we could oh, what we had. I mean, compared to other, like, frankly, we still compared to other churches, you know, having music and doing this. Orthodox Christians who do this, and I bought it at a church supply place. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, oh, Athens. Yeah. 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 Um, I can't tell if that's still on. Did you turn it off? Uh, Wendy's in charge of it now. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's not his, it's Penny's computer. Yeah. You didn't leave this uncovered for a reason, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a message that I was supposed to do something like complain. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm just, okay, right. Yeah. Well, sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.